All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to mock interview number 104. Today, we're featuring a software engineer and a bootcamp graduate in Aliun. My name is Albert Chen of Albert's List, and I'll be your host today. And with me is my co-host, Feng Lam, who is a software engineer himself, a graduate of a bootcamp from many, many moons ago, and a software engineering career coach. For those of you who are here in the audience today, the way that we're running this is fairly simple. Um, Fong is going to go ahead and ask him some questions. This, these are focused on leak code questions. Ali Uno will answer, and then Fong will provide feedback. If you in the audience have questions yourself, feel free to ask and add to the conversation. All right, Fong, thank you for coming back. Over to you. Yeah. Uh, yep. Cool. Uh, hey, hey, everyone. Uh, this is Fong. Uh, hopefully, you guys can hear me all right. Uh, let me know. If there's some issue with hearing me. But anyway, uh, I'm a software engineer. I've been working in the field for uh, quite a number of years now, since 2017 or so. Um, yeah, I've been working at a number of different companies, uh, been both sides of the interview panels uh, as both candidates, as well as uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, conducting interviews. So. Yeah, I have uh, some knowledge in this field and hopefully be able to kind of uh, give a mock interview today uh, and see how it goes. Uh, yeah, uh, to you, Aliun, uh, feel free to say a few uh, sentences about yourself and uh, yeah, and then we can begin. Yeah, um, hi, my name is Aliun. Um, I'm currently attending a boot camp, supposed to be graduating in a month now, um, or three weeks actually. Um, but for the most part, uh, it's an intensive boot camp tech elevator here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, we're just learning to be a full stack developer. So right now we're actually at a portion where we're learning the front end. We already learned the back end already um, in our language that we use for the most part is Java. Um, and we're also working with databases and understanding relational, what was it? Relation diagram and yeah, well, relation. And ER diagrams and things like that. So um, it's pretty good. And yeah, hmm, cool. Uh, yeah. So let's let's get uh, let's dive in. I I ask a few sort of uh, technical uh, questions, uh, just base basics about like you know uh, things that you've learned, and then uh, and then we go from there, and then uh, do kind of like a soft problem to see how you're going to fare with that, right? Cool. So. Uh, the first question would be, uh, what are what are the most like challenging experience that you've uh, encountered in your bootcamp thus far, and 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 uh, what kind what kind of uh, what are the situations of it, and 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 what are uh, some of the ways that you or your team uh, you know use to kind of overcome that. Yeah, um, so far, some of the challenging things, it's not necessarily even um, exercise, but it's more so on a concept. Um, when we first started the boot camp, I think at week three, because I already kind of understood um, logic to a point and I understood return types based on the methods. Um, when it started to expand and we're creating classes and we're treating classes as data types, that's where the confusion for me started to a point anyway. I was trying to wrap my head around it and during those weeks, I was just thinking on what is this class? What is the purpose of it? Why do you, why does it have this instant variables? What are these methods inside of it? So it was very confusing for me. Um, not confusing to what it was happening, but confusing to the ideology and in itself. Um, so that was one of the first real challenges for me. Um, but thankfully, um, sticking through it, um, just being calm and making it make sense in my head kind of really helped me out. Um, I was, able to digest it and basically explain it in a way that makes sense to me. Um, but those in the very beginning, those were one of the few challenges. Um, we also had another project. Um, what was it? The I'll say the vending machine application. Um, and so we were basically supposed to use Java to create a vending machine well, that had basically items that you can buy it. Um, and it the challenging part was how me and my partner wanted to do so. Um, his thinking was um, to use a map. My thinking was to use a um, list. And it was kind of, we're kind of trying to bounce off of it, each other and just 
we had a lot of different of opinions, but we both made it work. Uh, we were that that was one of the small concepts. Obviously, there was a lot more that me and him both differed on. Um, but throughout the whole process, um, he was helping me. I was helping him to a point, and we just both got were able to get it done. Okay. Uh... Uh, what are like, kind of like the largest conflict you have working with that uh, with with that particular uh, team member or you know with anyone else and 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 what are kind of the way that you uh, overcome that conflicts? Uh, just just go a little bit in depth uh, with that. Yeah. Uh, so one of the correct. things yeah. was actually well, obviously. So we were supposed to be creating. Um, a class that contains the items that we were supposed to be representing. So let's say we were creating potato chips. Um, we needed the potato chips to have a price. Um, what was it? The potato chip types and everything like that. So it was supposed to obviously represent a real world object. Um, how those objects were going to be stored inside of our vending machine was where me and him had a difference on. Um, I thought that there was much more of an easier way that we can do so. Um, but his way actually made sense because um, he was taking in actually two, obviously two data types, um, both int and a list of items. And that was just kind of, it was, I don't, to this day, I was like, wow, that was a really good, um, way of approaching it. So thankfully he, yeah, that was pretty good. And my way would have been a little bit more difficult. Um, so that was one thing. The other thing technically was the fact that he was kind of using the constructors as a way to write logic, um, and for, for me, anyway, that was something I never thought about. Um, and so I was, I was looking at the code, even when we were doing code reviews, there was a point where I had to try to digest it and look at because that was the first time I ever seen it. I always thought of a constructor as a way just to create an object. I never looked at it as a way to actually write logic inside of a constructor. Um, so I was like, okay. And so he was doing a lot of things inside the constructor and it was working, but that was definitely um, a mind bed for me at the time anyway, because it was the first time I saw it. Um, and then there was another problem, which was the variables that we were creating. Um, we were trying to provide the values, but it since we were basically class hopping to a point, because um, we had a menu um, and then we had a menu starter and then it had like a whole bunch of prompts. And then we were basically getting pounced out again. The variables uh, values weren't actually coming apart throughout the whole process. So we had to create a different class. Um, and so it was, it, it was definitely, it was definitely different. And I think that's where our difference came because he was obviously more advanced at me than me at that moment anyway. And he was thinking of a lot of more different concepts that I never thought about. I just thought we can just use a method. Um, as opposed to basically class hopping. But throughout the process, he taught me a lot and it caught me obviously off guard in the beginning, but it helped me out um, in the long term and understanding that it's not bind and that not anything is linear. It's not like you have to do it this way. It basically kind of opened my mind um, when it comes to coding. One thing I would kind of uh, want to ask is, in regards of uh these things works for example right and and sometimes things that that you you don't think is working and he made it work have you ever yeah. questioned whether or not it is the correct way to do because because there are certain things in so uh this this will come as as something that you've learned uh throughout your career is that while you can do a lot of things working, you can almost do an infinite amount of things to make things work, but sometimes it is not, uh, well, uh, just just because something works doesn't mean it's something you should do, right? Have you ever questions of what he does and actually look up uh, kind of like the standards on what uh, you should be doing? Um, or, or also something that you sort of just uh, sort of just uh, surprised that it works and you kind of go with it. it. It's okay for either yes or no for this one. Uh, but yeah, just just want to know that. Uh, um, I, I I mean, working with him kind of just taught me that there's no right or wrong way. Um, I don't think. Yeah, like you said, I just maybe my want to see it work, and if it does, I take it to heart and I think about it and I think about how I can utilize it. If it's a little bit too much, then maybe I can try to refactor it. But for the most part, I just try to see if it works. If it works, then great. I'm not I'm not going to tell you how to write a code. Uh, 
So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I for something like this, I would suggest to sort of uh. Hmm. I mean, this this is hard to do in a boot camp environment where you really have very limited amount of time and you just, you know, for the lack of yeah. a better word, get stuff working, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I would recommend is uh, sometimes it's okay to pull back and check to see if, if that is kind of the standard way to do. Just, just because something is working doesn't mean it's, you know, something that you should be doing. Uh, I, I, I mentioned that because uh, having logic, a bunch of logic in constructor is actually something you do not want to do. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, is is there's some reason behind this? It might complicate stuff. It's better to make things more modular, uh, and and you and you're gonna get into the you, once you get more into it, you you're gonna get into things like um, a dependency injections and stuff like that. That's why people will inject different uh, like class properties from the different things and merge them together rather than just make one thing way too complex and there, there, there are reasons behind it so again just because something's working uh not necessarily mean that is something that you should be doing uh sometimes people can be clever and come up with something that's you know working uh even though is shouldn't and that's Kind of something that, that that you need to watch out for. All right, that's it. cool. Uh, one more questions before we do some uh, logic problem is uh, you mentioned that that that, that you have uh, you kind of touched some things about databases and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's go a little bit deep into this. Um, uh, first question would be fairly uh, straightforward. What is the difference between a SQL and a NoSQL database? Uh, in your words, you don't have to take like a textbook answer. What what is the main difference? Yeah, um, sadly, I haven't done no SQL, so I can't really explain it that well. But um, but the SQL language is basically um, sequence query language. It allows you to basically write statements and get information off the database. No SQL language. Wow, I. I don't utilize it, but I'm guessing if SQL language is kind of that basically writing statement to get information, NoSQL would basically be the opposite. Um, you don't write statements, you will basically get information off of maybe visually mm -hmm. seeing it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to break out, out of uh, the interview more. Uh, I would say that if you don't know the question, it's okay yeah. to say you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Don't 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 guess. That's the very important things in a software in, in interview. Don't mm -hmm. guess what you don't know. Right. If you don't know, it's okay to say, "Hey, I'm not familiar with it." Nobody is going to be familiar with everything. Someone asked me uh, Android stuff. I want to know. I have no idea, but but be be sure that when you say something, you you know it, right? Uh, and that's it. cool. So let let let's just uh let's just kind of uh ask about a uh, SQL stuff there. So um, do you know why do you use a SQL database in the first place? Um, yeah, it just makes your job much easier. If you have a big database um, of a whole bunch of information, you kind of want to be able to subtract or get the information that you need based off uh, the statement that you write. So if you want to know, for example, if a table has a user um, ID of a certain um, number, you will basically want to find that by just using a statement, um, a query statement, as opposed to if you don't have it, you will kind of basically be scrounging around and try to find it throughout your database. Hmm. Okay, what, what you mentioned is the language of querying it. Okay. What are the actual database? Why would you use a SQL database? Like 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 from for your learning, why do you put data in an SQL at all? Like why why don't you just make an object in uh, your computer and stuff the data there? Why why do you bother with make putting this in the SQL database? Yeah. Um, well, you need it from my point of view. You need it um, to live in a. You need it to live somewhere. Um, trying to create it in Java is obviously. As soon as well, let's say I was doing an application um, that relied on a database. 
if something happens and I basically delete, um, what was it, my Java file, it will basically not, all the information I just created would not be there anymore. So it's a little bit obviously more secure to create it in a database and obviously be in a place where it can live as opposed to just in Java where there's a lot more possibilities of it going away. I mean, isn't that the same thing if someone just uh, accidentally type drop table and then your table in the uh, Postgres just fell off mm. and it's gone? Yeah, that is, yeah, that is true. Um, yeah, someone could basically do that. But I mean, yeah, that's true. But also a database, um, it can, it doesn't just have to live in Java. It can also live in Postman. It's not, it's not linear to just basically one client. Um, it can live, basically, if you create a database, um, you can use multiple clients to access that data. You don't have to be in Java anymore. But I get what you're saying. You're saying that if you put it in that, if you put it in a, yeah, it would basically still drop. I mean, so your question is basically asking, why do you put it? Um, why use the database at all? Why, why wouldn't, uh, why would that say like Allion's uh, computer has a file that just stuff a bunch of stuff in there, right? Like a Excel file. And then mm -hmm. um, people just, uh, you know, get from there. Because you can, right? Like I, I can share you like a Excel document and then you mm -hmm. and I will have access to the same Excel document, right? Yeah. Why, why, can, why, why wouldn't we just do that? I mean, it's, we could, but it's just dangerous. I mean, having a lot more different places to store your information is always more productive um, as opposed to just leaving it in one place. You never know what's going to happen. But I get what you're saying. Um, just saying why create a database at all. Mm -hmm. You have to, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think that you, I never questioned the accounts. I never questioned the logic. I always think that that's just one of the best things to do. You need to store your information at some place anyway. Um, so storing it in a database is probably the most optimal thing for me. Anyway, that's my assessment, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, I would say, um, dive deep into these things uh, once your bootcamp concluded yes. the, the most the most uh, important thing is to understand them in some depth because you are going to get questions like this right like why but why right like you might get questions like you uh the interviewer might ask like what language are you, you know using for your server side, you say Java. The first question is why? Why you use do that, right? Why why not Python? Why not mm -hmm. JavaScript? There are reasons behind each of the use case. And I'm I'm asking this because I know that the bootcamp does not answer these questions yep. for you. Right. Uh, I I've been there uh, years ago. And a lot of this will come on your end to figure out the why behind things because because you don't because uh it is an engineering things right uh you get a project uh say you need to build a client a server things mm -hmm. uh and you cannot just say like hey I'm gonna put Java up because that's the only thing I know mm -hmm. uh, there has to be uh, justifications behind doing something right mm -hmm. so I, I I want you to kind of take that and and understand why you're going to be asked because uh even during the the, the, the non super super technical design stuff you are going to be asked these kind of questions right like if you have things like uh language java uh you know um database sql uh redis stuff like that the the interviewer will will dig into it and try to see how deep you understand these concepts, right? So it's, it's, it's very, very important to kind of uh, understand them in some, understand them enough so that you can um, kind of talk to them uh, why certain things uh, 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 work in certain ways. So uh, I give you the, the answers for the SQL. The, the reason you want to put things in the database is, as you said, is is safer, but why is it safer? Well, it's safer because the database uh, generally you can um you can shard them, uh, which is you can break them into pieces and then 
put them in a different location around the United States uh, in case of, you know, say, uh, if Amazon uh, data warehouse get flooded, exploded, Amazon doesn't go down because they their data is sharded and uh, replicated in multiple places. Uh, the database uh, itself, also you do SQL over non-SQL because SQL is a more structured thing. You generally use it for things, for the data that uh, you know that one change often. For example, like a bank uh, user data. Uh, if you in the bank, generally there's only a few things on it. It's not going to be a, a wide variety of stuff, but for companies like Facebook, uh, their database definitely is going to be a NoSQL database because it has to be more flexible in expanding. There, there, there's, those are some of the kind of basic, uh, you know, uh, outline of why one thing over the other, stuff like that. So no, yeah, just, just, just make sure to uh, be able to answer those kind of questions uh, in some amount of uh, depth rather than just you know naming things because um engineers are more interested in the why behind things rather than just what you know right like uh people just you know if they ask you hey what what you do with your last project and you say not something else like like have a justification over things so the, hopefully that will kind of help you a little bit on yeah. uh, you know on, on 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 these kind of understanding yeah. right so uh cool so let's let's go through kind of like uh an exercise um do you have you have like a google doc you can just share that I'm not gonna use your uh we won't run any code uh just a google doc let me see Mm -hmm. I don't have one, but I can create one real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a blank screen. Uh, you get we we just write code without running. And this is a uh, fairly common. Um, this is just whiteboarding. Uh, you you usually cannot run the code in this um this kind of. Do you want me to share my screen? Uh, yeah, share your screen with the okay. Google Doc page. Applying patients are okay. Not that one. Mm -hmm. All right, can you guys see my screen? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Just uh, yeah, you have a Google Doc. Just open that. Or like Word document, anything. Just, All right, there we go. Cool. So, uh, the first questions I have is okay. So uh, you have a number, right? Uh, say five, uh, right? Yep. Uh, I want you to find the square of this number. How would you do it? What is the function would look like? A square, not a square root. Square of a number. Yeah, just the square of the number. No. Um, so the first thing I have to do um, if I'm creating this method, um, doesn't matter yeah. if it's public or private, right? Um, and I am using, okay, so I'll say public, um, and the return type of it is going to be an int um, line squared. And it takes in um, a number. And it's not obviously it's just any number, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um I'm just gonna put return. I'm gonna create a variable over here, um, just what it's gonna return. Okay. Well, all right. Um so I know that I got the number and I need to find the square of that number. Um, mm -hmm. My thinking would be it's just the number times this number itself. And then that would just give me what I'm looking for. And if that is the case, maybe I am overthinking it to a point, but I'm thinking I would just have to do. 
functionally, I can do something along the lines of, I don't think I even need this variable, to be honest. But uh, I don't need this. I could just do um, number times number. And basically, this would just return me um, what I'm looking for. You said not, you said the. Okay. All right. And this is basically viral. Yeah. Okay, here's my question next. Um, is there any situation that will break this? Is there any situation that will break this? Mm -hmm. um, well, if someone had, well, you mean actually by the time it comes in, or do you mean before someone puts in um, the parameter? Like someone put in the parameters. And the, uh, is there any parameter that might break this? Oh. Yeah, I mean, if they don't put in the right data type, I mean, it won't execute at all. Um, but if well, they do provide, but the right, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But well, what if it's the right data type? Okay. Say, so say, I, I will give you a number. Okay. Like you, because because the type is enforced, right? So the input say it will sh it should be correct. It should be an, a correct integer. What would break this? We we'll break this. Um, I could say maybe one thing is the fact that I don't have any logic in it whatsoever. I'm just basically taking the number and multiplying it by itself. Um, so on my end, maybe the code is released. Not, but that's, have but, that, but that's that's what it is, right? That's the square of the number. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay. The the situation that would break this is if I pass in, if I pass in like five divided by zero, it, it might break it because uh, divide by zero and you try to double it, it might break it. So that's something that you need to kind of watch out for. Or I can pass in a very very big number. If I type in like nine 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 for like twenty letters and I pass in, it will overflow your number. Okay. You will get into that situation. Uh, yeah. You get number overflow. You might have to use like a long for to kind of keep it. So cool. That's 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 okay for this. Okay. Here's okay. my other question. So, how would you find a square root of a number? Okay. Um. Well, there's two ways I can either use. I know the math class has a method that basically you cannot me. use the math class. Okay, I can now use the math class. Mm -hmm. And do you want me to write it out, or do you just want me to just answer the question? Uh, talk through your logic first. So, say if you get any okay. number, mm -hmm. how do you find a square root of a number? Say if I get, yeah, you cannot use a math class though. That's the uh, that's the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, one thing I'm thinking logically is. And basically, okay. Well, one thing I can do is let's say the square root number is coming, it's getting passed in. Uh, one thing I can do. Well, yeah, I could. I, there's there's a way where I can, but that that that. that so, I would do something like this and um it would do something like this and then compare the value to it and so i'll store this um i'll say hmm. so so, so, so okay so so before you go too far uh so what is the square root so what is the square root say of like 25 sorry if what number 25 if i pass it 20, it'll be five, five. cool so it'll be five, that's, yeah. that's the square root right Two fives yeah. make twenty-five, right? So you pass in twenty-five, yeah. you get five. Okay. How do you yeah. solve that? How do you get out of five as a return? Well, I mean, personally, uh, I just well, I know the number. I know that that's what a square root is supposed to be doing. Like if it's eighty-one, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be two nines. Mm -hmm. So if it's the number, is this number time by itself that's giving you the square root value? Um, 
So that's kind of my thinking of it. It's the number multiplied by the number. And then that's just um, the square root of what I'm looking for. Um, if I'm thinking of it counterwise. Um, How do you find that number? What, what, what can you do to get that? What can I do to get that number of 80, um, what, to, of 25? Yeah, of all 81, uh, anything. How do you get that number? How do you get nine from 81? How do you get five from 25? Oof. Well, if I was to code it, um, yeah. I don't think this is the most logical thing, but I could try to put it in a wild condition. So, um, so, 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 I'll say so wild. before even you try to, okay, so I, 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 I slowed you down again. Uh, before you try to think of things in code, try to think it would be regular logic first. How would you mm -hmm. get number five without just, you know, memorize that five, five is 25? How would you get five? If you say like, if you just, you have, you, you never, you have no idea what, what two number with times together to get 25. How do yeah. you get that? Well, yeah. How do you check it? Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I don't think I know the formula. So I probably would basically try and run it. So if someone gave me like, I don't know, um, going back to 81, I would basically say, all right, what's the closest numbers that I know? What are the numbers that can't be um, 81? That if you time it by itself, it won't give you 81. So I'm already eliminating five. And then I'll just start at six. I'll say six times six, um, seven times seven, um, eight times eight and then nine times nine, and if that gives me the value that I want, I know that the square root of that number is nine. Wait, why did you eliminate five? Because I know that that um, value, whatever, I already know. But you don't know, just just your, you, you, you have no idea what five times five is, or what six times six is. Yeah. You, you I mean, just think of it as a blank every time. Blind case. How would, then, yeah, if I, that was a blind case, then I would just have to include five, also include four, and so also include three, two, and uh, one. So I would basically be starting from way behind, and that would possibly be a long, a, a lot of catch up to do. But basically, I would have to do something like that. If I don't know any of the numbers in itself, um, I would basically have to do it one by one. So it would be one okay. times one, two times two, three times three, okay. four times four. Cool. Um, how can you optimize that? Because right now you just do one times one, you do it until you get to nine. How can you optimize it? Um, optimizing it. Hmm. I could. Well, hmm. the best way I can possibly optimize that is basically the numbers, well, the numbers square, well, no, that's not going to do it. Um, maybe just eliminate the numbers that I know won't actually work. I think that's kind of where... You, you, you don't know what's not going to work. Okay, okay, sure, sure. So what would what would the numbers that not going to work? Um, since, you, since, you, since you keep going uh, into that, train of thoughts yeah. is okay. What are the numbers that you know are not going to work? For my case, I know um, any number, um, well, I know the numbers five, six, I mean, numbers five, four, three, two, one aren't gonna work. Um, they're just not in the ball range to be um, possible. Why? Why is it not possible? Because the value for those are too low. Then, but why, then, that kind then, of, then why is five is not too low? What is too low here? Um, you're saying again one time, you said what is too low here? Yeah. Why, why did you say that one, two, three, four is too low? Why is it too low? Because the values for those would be nine. Um, the values for those would be what? Uh, four, the values of or would be 16, those values are just not close to 91, which is the number that I'm trying to reach. But then five and five is still not 81 though. Five, 25 is still way far from, from yeah. 81. Well, so then, then why that, would you start at five? Why not start at seven? Or why not start at nine? Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. 
Um, yeah, what, what 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 is considered too low? That's that's because you yeah, when, yeah. when you say too okay. low, what what does it mean by too low? Okay. So if that's the case, yeah, then I probably would have to find as opposed to yeah, because I'm if my way of thinking is I'm starting from a random number. Um, I could start from the number that's either above it and a number that's below it. So the two numbers that are right, yeah. Okay, two. I sl I slowed you. Start with a random number is not a bad idea because you can start with say like twenty. Then you do twenty yeah. times twenty. You know that four hundred, yeah. right? You you, yep. you would be like, hmm, that's too high. Yep. Start with a random number is not a bad idea, by the way. Mm -hmm. So what can you do with starting with a random number? Let, let's let's try okay, to see okay. uh, where you're going to go with yeah. that. Because starting with a random number is not a bad mm -hmm. idea. You can start with 20. You can start with 5,000. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if I start from a random number, um, it eliminates a whole bunch of numbers. Um, it eliminates a lot of numbers that I know can't be. If I get... If I do 20 and I get 400 and my search is supposed to be finding 81, I know that there's a whole bunch of numbers that I can eliminate right off the bat. Um, Which is anything then, above 20 can be eliminated. Yes. Right? Yes. Then the anything we need to go less, right? Yep. So that means I'm now going left. And then I can also do another case where I would do the same for five. Well, actually, now I'm at 20. I could now basically divide that by 10, divide that by two and try 10. And then okay. if I say um, 10 times 10, that's 100. I know now I'm at the ballpark of what I'm trying to find. Um, then I, I can maybe divide that by two. And then I see I'm at 25 now. Then I realize I'm very low. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, then I say five right? and just... Yeah. So okay. now I'm going right again. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm going, I went left. Um, now I'm trying to go right. Um, so now I'm five. I could possibly pass it a different number, um, a random number three. And at that point I'm at what eight. Um, uh, so eight times eight is seventy-two. Now I know I'm very close to what I'm trying to find. Um and I know that ten is eliminated. I know that seven is in well, I know eight is in the contention. So now I know that my numbers are basically going to be eight, nine. So those are the two numbers. Um, I try to assess. Well, I, now it's actually eight and nine, my bad. So I realize eight is basically 72. I realize 10 is 100. And so I realize the only number that I can have is nine. Okay. okay. So so we, 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 we can narrow it down that we can randomize a random number and then try to do binary search, right? Because this is pretty pretty much a binary search. You either go left yeah. or you go right of a number, right? Yeah. If 20 is too big, we go left. Half of it. If it's too small, we go right and we go left. We should. Okay, cool. So, um, um, how, 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 okay, go ahead. What, what was your question? My question, and it's how, as outside um, of what we're doing at this moment, but, if someone were to ask me that question in real life, what I basically, because that's the one thing I was worried about is guessing what I basically say, I, I could guess a number or would they just, they will be understand that, that they will be fine with the concept of that is my train of thought at that moment. Or would they basically say, we don't want you to guess? Because that's where my confusion was. I was thinking on how can I say it without making it sound like a guess? Mm, you want to be confident in your assessment so if you are going to to say that your guest just say that hey uh i think that i can try to use a random number as my starting point and then binary search it down mm -hmm. right you can say that oh uh, it's okay to say that mm -hmm. um okay uh I, 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 I tell you more about these questions afterward. But uh, anyway, so we start with a random number and then we binary say, okay, but 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 we are we are having an issue in the sense that the random number we pick can be very big and then we can, we might take a lot of cycle to kind of get it down, right? For example, if our input is 25, uh, 
and the, our first guess number is five million. Uh, it will take a while for us to get to five, right? Mm -hmm. What can we improve? Um, as opposed to maybe guessing, um, one thing we could do is basically store all of, uh, let me think of how I say this. You can store all those values in, how can I say this the best way? So my thinking is basically, you since we know, and this is not coding, or this is just um, logic-based, because I'm thinking on coding still, mm -hmm. just in general. Um, the one way we could do this is basically write out all the numbers um, that are, um, if you square, if that all the numbers that have a square root value. So we can start off from um, two, four, we basically write it all out. Um, but then that could also okay. lead to a lot of issues because that's, yeah, okay. a whole bunch of numbers. That's, this is not a bad strategy. So say if we start at 20 and we do 20, so if our input is 25, right? We can start out mm -hmm. at 20, right? We do 20 times 20 is 400. We're like, hmm, that's not the right answer. Mm -hmm. What we can do is we can, we can cache the 400 there in our, make an object in even the database cache is somewhere that next time if we see 400 we know the answer immediately is 20 right okay. that's the one way to kind of optimize it uh you can this is it's not a bad idea because we we, we and then we try like right 20 is not correct and we go to 10 then 10 times 10 is 100 then it's like hmm, still not the right answer but we create a, a another record in our catch, right? We say 100 will be 10. So next time, if the input is 100, we immediately have the answers without having to kind of slog through this process, right? Yep. That 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 could be one way to optimize it to for 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 next lookup, right? This is the kind of optimized for the next time, not for this current time, because you know we might not find a number yet, but we keep looking until we get it, right? Yep. But, and then we 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 catch it, right? But that that's 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 also not a bad idea to, as you said, you know, save your uh, past result to to optimize it, right? It's not it's not a bad idea, right? Yeah. Uh, what about what about like say like if the input is like twenty five, why don't we start at you know half of that? Like instead of start a random number, we start at half of twenty five. So twenty five divided by two, uh, and then round it up, we start at that number, right? Why do uh, we do that? Because then we we eliminate the chance of we might guess a very big number, okay. right? Because yes. if we random number, uh, the, the randomization process, your first number might be 5 million, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But why, why don't we start it maybe half of the half of the input and then we start from there mm -hmm. and then see, and then we still minor research until we get the, 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 the right solution, right? So you're saying as soon as the input comes in, just divide it by um, two, round it up. And two, yeah, and then round it up. And then we that will be our first start, start oh, point, yeah. right? Because then, then, then we eliminate a chance that it might be very big. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, mm, yeah. Uh, okay, there, there, there are a few different ways that you can go about this. I would tell you one thing uh, is that this is, Sometimes you get the questions that you might not be able to get the most optimal solution. This is one of the example of it. Uh, getting the very optimal solution of a square root function is actually not trivial. Uh, you can look up kind of Wikipedia. You see there are tons and tons of paper and research behind this. Uh, it's not a straightforward question, but uh, what the interviewer sometimes might want to see is how you arrive at your logic being just kind of, you know, being thrown into uh, sort of the question that might not really expect you to complete. This is one kind of uh, interview questions that you might get. And they just want to see how quickly can you come with different uh, optimization for this, right? Uh, so again, uh, some exercise for you. Uh, 
and you know, doesn't involve any writing code. Uh, just kind of see how your logic actually works around this kind of uh, behavior. Right? Cool. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's about time. Uh, let me see. I, I go through the questions that people ask. Okay. Uh, Araya asked, can you say you want to guess and provide your best response? So uh, generally, if the questions is a technical questions, um, unless your guess, unless you know that your guess is close enough, I wouldn't just throw out a wild uh, guess on it. It's okay, Again, it's always okay to say, not sure about it. Uh, I can look it up, things like that. Uh, it's okay, right? Uh, people do give some good uh, kind of input on what to do with the questions. Some people say cash, yeah, binary search is a good for you. Yeah. Uh, you can use a mod. Uh, yeah, there, there's 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 a tons of way around this kind of question, these questions about the square root. Uh, but again, it's, it's really not a question that you will figure out the answer um, in 20 minutes uh, given. Uh, when you get asked certain questions, sometimes it's really just about how you formulate your uh, your thinking around the logic of it, right? Uh, and one of the reasons that I, I didn't have you write any code today is because the one thing that boot camps uh, rats tend to do first and foremost is uh, to jump into writing code. Um, I know that because I used to do that kind of stuff, but you don't want to do that. Uh, you kind of want to figure out what you're gonna write uh, and then write it. Don't start with, mm, I'm gonna try everything now. And then the, the reason is that if you make mistakes, it will take you more time to kind of go back and correct your mistakes. So uh, keep that in mind, uh, yeah. Uh, any questions for me? I think um, I'm probably going to talk about it a little bit more after this, but no, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, there are some times where the questions I would just kind of like, why do you mean why? Like, I'm just like, that's the way it is. Like, even um, the database, I was just kind of like, I didn't think about the reason why that, mm -hmm. yeah, you can have multiple, yeah. yeah, multiple information spread out. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was just kind of, I was just like, because we do it. Now, I didn't think about the fact of the why. So that was, uh, yeah, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. The why is uh, more important than what uh, you don't want to say. I I, I, I I use Java for my, I use Java Spring for my back end. But, but why? why? Why did you use that? What are the use cases around, right? That, that there should be a justification. And, and it's okay if you don't know it, it now, uh, but it's just something that, you know, keep in the back of your head. Uh, try to kind of understand the reason why certain things are being used, right? Because uh, big, big systems, people don't just throw stuff. And then just because someone know that they use it, Generally, there are a, a reason why, whether or not it performance, whether or not it is because it can do, you know, uh, handle large, large amount of data set. One thing or another, different type of database too. There are things, those those are the things that it be very useful for you to kind of read about. Because one thing that I would say is whatever you put on your resume, uh, those are generally fair games that you are going to be asked. For example, you put like, I've worked with database, uh, use, you know, a, a SQL database. Your interviewer might be a database specialist for all you know. There might be some guy that only works in database. He's going to review you on it, right? Uh, or you might say, you, know, you might say like, oh, you can, uh, I, I work with Java Spring. Your interviewer, she might be someone that works mainly in the Spring ecosystem. She will ask you a lot of questions surrounding why you do this. Like some, what what are some of the you know things that you've seen that are kind of weird in it in when you're using certain frameworks. Right, you are going to be asked them. So just just keep in mind about them and try to be more uh, proactive in learning the why rather than just get things working, right? That's that's my biggest uh, suggestions for it. Yep. No questions for me after that. that was good. Cool. That's, uh, that's it.
that's that's it. Uh, hand back to Albert. Albert, you uh, showed up. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This is fun. This is good. Uh, always good to see us taking that technical route. And if you're interested in more, we host many more events on a weekly basis here at Albert's List, including mock interviews that you can take part in if you'd like to participate or even go through an interview much like this. Thank you to all who are here today, Fong especially, as well as Aliun for doing this technical mock interview. This particular video or webinar will be on YouTube where you can watch later and we'll be following up the link. Have a rest, great rest of your week ahead and we will see all of you very soon for other programming. Thanks so much. Bye. Later.